So reach for your Bible, and I want you to open your Bible to Hebrews chapter 10. And today, we're going to talk about the need to not throw away our faith. And I want us to begin in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, where the Bible says, And let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. I just love this verse, but let me give you the background to this verse. When you come to the book of Hebrews, the new Christians have been waiting a long, long time for God to do some things in their life. Due to persecution, many of them have lost their jobs. They've lost their homes. Some of them have become so scattered they can't even find the other members of their family. Some of them need to be healed. They're believing for prosperity. They're believing for so many things. And in fact, when they came to Christ, they came to Christ because of the gospel, which means good news. But it seems like ever since they've received the good news of the gospel, bad news has happened to their lives because they have been persecuted. The devil has been attacking them. The Roman government's been attacking them. Religious groups have been attacking them. They have just been under pressure for years and years and years and years. And they're beginning to think to themselves, maybe we're wrong. We've been waiting so long. If God was going to answer our faith, he's had a lot of time. Surely God would have done it by now, but it hasn't happened yet. Maybe we're believing wrong. Maybe we're believing a fantasy. Maybe this is never going to happen. And they're tempted to do what many people are tempted to do, and that is release their faith and walk away. And the writer of Hebrews writes to them now and says to them in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Those words hold fast in Greek are really important. In Greek, it is the single word kat echo, but it's a compound of two words. The first word is the word kata. The word kata carries the idea of something that is dominating, conquering, subjugating. The second part of the word is the word echo, which means I have or I hold, it pictures someone who's wrapped their arms around something and they say, I have it, it's mine. But when you compound the two words together, it is translated here, hold fast, which pictures someone who doesn't just have something, but now they're doing everything they can to hold on to it. They're holding fast. And because of the preposition kata that is used here, which carries the idea of something that's dominating, subjugating or conquering. It means they've made a decision. They're going to hold it down. They're going to dominate it. They're going to conquer it. They're going to hang on to this promise just like a bulldog holds on to a bone. You know, when a bulldog finds the bone of his dreams, you might try to take it away from that bulldog, but that bulldog will wrap his jaws around that bone. You can tug, you can pull as hard as you wish but you're not going to get that bone out of the mouth of that dog. And that is kind of the idea in this verse. Wrap your jowls around that promise. You hold on. If you need to put all of your weight on top of it, make sure it doesn't get out from underneath you. You dominate it. You conquer it. You subjugate it. You hold fast. Do whatever you have to do to hold on to your promise. And there's a good example of this word, hold fast, the Greek word katecho, which is in Romans chapter 1, and it's used there negatively to describe unrighteous men. And in Romans chapter 1, it talks about unrighteous men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. That word hold is the same word, the word katecho. And it's a very good use of the word. It means that unrighteous men know the truth and they don't like it progressives. They know what the Bible says. And they don't like it. So what do they do? They suppress it. That's a translation of the word catecho. They hold the truth in unrighteousness. They suppress the truth in unrighteousness. They say, we're going to do everything to put a lid on this truth. We're going to hold this truth down. We're not going to let this truth get out where it can affect people. We're going to hold it down and make sure we stay on top of this. There it is used negatively. Now carry that idea into Romans 10 and verse 23, where we are to sit on truth. Why? Because life tries to take 
our truth from us. Life tries to take our dream from us. If you have a promise that you're believing for, the dream thieves of life come to steal it. The devil himself will speak to you. And he'll say, ah, it's never going to happen. If it would have happened, it would have happened by now. And the devil will speak to you and speak to you and speak to you. If you make it past the devil, then you've got the voice of time. Huh. And time says, hey, the clock is moving. You're wasting life. You're wasting time. Maybe you ought to let go and move on and do something else. Time will try to speak to you. And if you let time speak to you, it will steal your promise. And if you make it beyond the devil, and if you make it beyond time, huh, then you've got the voice of your friends. Your friends love you. And they may say, hey, come on. It's really good that you believed and you've given a lot of time for this to come to pass. But this thing has not come to pass yet. Maybe you ought to just let it go. And if you listen to the voice of your friends, they may talk you out of God's promise. And if you make it beyond the devil, and if you make it beyond time, and if you make it beyond the voice of your friends, there is one more voice you have to deal with. That's the voice of your family. Your family loves you. And sometimes knowing how to negotiate with your family can be quite difficult because they want you to be blessed. They want you to do well. And if your family thinks you're wasting time, or if your family thinks you ought to forget something and move on and try something else, they may say to you, look at your wife, look at your kids, look at your finances. We are just so concerned about you. Well, they're your family. Of course, they're concerned about you. Of course, they love you. They want you to be blessed. They want you to do well. But if you listen to them, they may say, come on, let's just walk away from that. Let's just walk away from that. The point is, there are many voices speaking to us all the time. The devil talks to us. Time talks to us. Our friends talk to us. The voice of our family talks to us. Disappointments talk to us. And all of these voices say, let it go. Just let it go. But God says, hold fast. Hold fast. And the moment you're tempted to let it go is usually when you're getting really close to the manifestation. Huh. Say amen. And in fact, this verse says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith. What does that mean? Profession. In Greek, it's the word homo logion. It's a compound of two words. The word homos means of the very same kind. The word logos means words. When you compound those two words together, it really means to say the same thing. Your translation may say confession. It's not a bad translation, but that's not altogether correct either. Let me give you an illustration. The word logos, the second part of the word means words. Well, I'm an author. And here in front of me is one of my books. Sparkling Gems from the Greek. If you don't have it, this is a book that you ought to have. I'm not trying to sell you a book. My book just happened to be laying here, and it's a good illustration. What is this book? This book is my words. It is what I have written. It is what I believe. If you read this book and you believe it, you're getting into agreement with me. You're agreeing with Rick Renner. Homa Logion, you and Rick Renner are saying the same thing. You're confessing the same thing. And in fact, it's not just saying the same words. It's thinking the same. It's believing the same. It's hearing the same. It's believing the same. It's really the picture of alignment. You're coming into alignment with me or you're coming into agreement with me. That's really what this word profession or confession means. So when we come to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, it says, hold fast the confession or profession of your faith. It describes us coming into alignment with God, coming into alignment with God concerning his promise, concerning his assignment for our life until we see it like God sees it. We hear it like God hears it. We feel it like God feels it. Our heart beats 
in rhythm with the heart of God, God and our heart, our heart are beating together on this issue, and we come into a place of divine alignment or agreement. And sometimes it takes a while for that to happen. You may think that you're in agreement, but as you walk in faith, you find moments when you just aren't so sure. Rather than walk away at that time, you need to say, God, you and me, we're going to get into agreement on this. I'm going to align myself with you, Lord, on this subject. I'm going to align myself with you concerning what you say, what you want, what you've assigned to my life. I'm going to get into agreement with you. And when you get into a place of agreement with God, that's when you really can make a confession of faith that has power. It has power. I think about Moses, a man that had to get into alignment with God's call on his life. Or how about Noah, a man who received an assignment from God? We don't know how long it took for him to really get into agreement with God. I know from my own life, God has given me numbers of assignments. I say easily, yes, in the beginning. But along the way, I find out that maybe there's a little unbelief hiding somewhere in my soul, and I've got to get rid of that unbelief and jerk myself into alignment with the Lord, because if anything in me is out of alignment, His promise can't flow through me. But finally, you get into a place of alignment, and when you get into that place of alignment, that's when the power flows, that's when the victory comes, that's when the answer comes. And it may be that your answer has not come yet because you've not yet gotten into a place of total alignment, a clear channel that that promise can flow through and be manifested in your life. Hold on. Hold fast to the profession of your faith. Do everything you can to get into alignment with God. And verse 23 goes on to say without wavering. That word wavering, the Greek word aklines, from the word klines, which means to stand. But when you put an A on the front, it means to lay down. And here's what we find. When people give up on their faith, they go to bed on their faith. They regress. They regress spiritually. They just go to bed on their faith. Now, you might say, well, why should I keep believing? I believed and believed and believed and believed and believed and believed and believed. Well, for the same reason that we read in this verse, the end of verse 23 says, for he is faithful that promise. If God said he's going to do it, he is going to do it. He is not a man that he should change his mind. He's not a man that could lie. And if God has promised it, God will perform it. And you need to stay in a place of faith and not throw away your faith because faithful is he that promised. And you just need to do everything you can to get into alignment and quit listening to all the voices telling you to throw your faith away. Then if you would jump over to verse 32. And in verse 32, he continues and he says, But call to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great fight of afflictions. He's reminding them of their early experience. He says, do you remember the early days when you were illuminated? The word illuminated is the Greek word photizo. It describes a brilliant flash of light that leaves a permanent and a lasting impression. Photizo, that's where you get the word for a photo or a photograph. And here it's describing divine revelation. For example, maybe you can remember when you were first illuminated concerning divine healing, it was like a divine flash of light went off on the inside of you. You saw it, you understood it, you embraced it, you believed it. Or maybe you had a revelation concerning giving and finances. I know that in your church, you probably had a lot of teaching about finances. And it was like Fatidzo, a great illumination. A light went off. You saw it. You understood it. You embraced it. You declared, I'm going to give and God's going to bless me. Well, hey, verse 32 says something important. It says, call to remembrance the former days in which after you were, after you were, after you were illuminated, you endured a great fight of affliction. And now the Bible is not scaring us. It's preparing us. It's telling us you need to know that when you have received a great illumination about your future, a promise of God, about your health, about your family, about your finances, 
when God has illuminated you, a bright light has just shown you what you're to do with your life, a fight always follows illumination. That's what the verse says. In which after you were illuminated, you endured a great fight of afflictions. Mm. The word fight is the Greek word athlesis, which is an athletic term, which means when you really get a word from God, you will be thrown into the fight of your life. The word afflictions is a Greek word which really describes mental or emotional struggles. You're going to be dealing with issues. You're going to be dealing with your own mind, your own emotions. And in fact, the next verse says, partly while you were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions. The word gazing stock is the Greek word theatron. It's where you get the word for a theater, which means when you declare your faith, are you listening to me? When you declare your faith and you say, God has spoken to me and I'm going to do this. God has given me a promise and this is going to happen. When you declare your faith, your faith puts you on the stage, just like the stage of a theater. When you never declared your faith and you never told anybody what God said to you, you weren't interesting to anybody. But the moment you declared your faith, suddenly you found yourself on the stage in a theater and people were buying tickets to come see the show. People love to see a good performance. And when you declare your faith and say, God's going to do this and God's going to do this and I'm going to do this, people say, mm-hmm, I wonder if it will really happen. Let's watch. And people begin to buy tickets to the show. And people love to see a spectacle of faith. And they sit in their seats, unfortunately, not always encouraging, sometime watching to see, is he really going to make it? Will he make it through Act 1? Will he make it through Act 2? Will he make it through Act 3? Will he make it through Act 4? Is he going to mess up along the way? Or is he going to finish the show? And you just need to know that when you make a faith declaration, you leave the private sector and you enter public life because everybody develops an opinion about whether you can really do what you say you're going to do, if you're really going to receive what you say God has promised you, and they all buy a ticket to the show to watch you in your walk of faith. So friends, if people are buying tickets to watch you, make sure you give them a good show. Show them how faith works. Show them how faith never lets go. Show them how faith presses through every obstacle. Show them how it works. If they're coming to watch you as a show, make sure you give them the show they'll never forget. A life of faith lived so well that they will want to leave their seats and be the next one on the stage. And it's interesting that it says in verse 33, you were made a gazing stock both by reproaches and afflictions. Hmm. The word reproaches describes what life does. Life does. Disappointments, reproaches, disappointments along the way. Afflictions describes what people do to you. People who hurl their insults at you and say you're never going to make it. So you deal with life. You deal with the voice of people. Here you are on the stage doing your best to perform. And then when you come to verse 35, again we find these particular believers were so discouraged They'd been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting that they were thinking about just throwing their faith away and forgetting it and moving on with their life. We know that because of verse 35, which says, Cast not away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. Do you see those words, cast not away? It is the Greek word apo balo. The prefix is apo, which means away. The second part of the word bala, which means to throw or to cast. You put the two words together, it means to throw away, to discard, like you would throw away a piece of trash, to throw something away, to get rid of something. And this word is very importantly used in Mark chapter 10 to describe blind Bartimaeus. And the Bible tells us that blind Bartimaeus was sitting in his place where he sat every day, and just like every day, 
He was wrapped with a towel, probably to keep his body warm. But on that particular day, Jesus came walking by. And he began to yell out to Jesus. And he wanted to go to Jesus. But he couldn't go to Jesus. He couldn't move on. Why? Because he was wrapped with a blanket or he was wrapped with a towel. And that verse uses the word apobalo to tell us blind Bartimaeus' attitude about that blanket. He cast it aside. He said, get this thing off of me. I want to move. I want to get up. I'm tired of laying here. I need to move. He wanted to take that blanket. He said, get this off of me. He hurled it off of him so that he could move forward. Now that same word is used here which means these believers were saying, this confession of faith, it has kept us in this spot for all of these years. We're in the same spot saying the same thing, believing the same thing, confessing the same thing. Nothing has happened. This confession of faith, if we had not believed this promise, if we had not made this declaration of faith, we could have moved on with our life and done something else. But instead, we're still stuck in the same old place, waiting for the same old thing, and I'm tired of this confession of faith. And they're tempted to take their faith and throw it away. That's what that word, cast not away, the Greek word apobalo means. But he says, cast not away, therefore, your confidence. The word confidence, the Greek word parousia, describes a very bold, bold kind of speaking. They were speaking their faith. And now they're tempted to throw it away. And he says, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, because it has great recompense of reward. Great recompense of reward. Recompense of reward is the word mista pedosia. The word mistos is the word for payment or money or reward. The second part of the word is from the word podas, which is the word for feet. You put the two words together, it pictures money on its feet moving in your direction. Maybe you could say money is coming. That's really what it means. And now the writer of Hebrews says, what a bad time for you to throw away your faith. Because right now at this very moment, Money is already on its feet. The reward is already on its feet. It's walking in your direction. And I want to tell you, what you've been believing for is on its feet. It's moving in your direction. It may not be coming as quickly as you wish, but your faith is like a magnet. It is attracting what you're believing. And what you're believing for is already on its feet. If it's healing, it's walking toward you. If it's deliverance, it's walking toward you. If it's a better marriage, it's walking toward you. If it's a new job, it's walking toward you. If it's money, it's walking in your direction. And he says, don't throw away your faith. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Keep up your big, bold kind of speaking because the answer is on its feet. It's already moving in your direction. Say amen. That's why the devil's trying to get you to give up right now. He knows the answer is about to show up. And my friends, I want to tell you, the answer is on its feet. It is moving in your direction. And then it says in verse 36, For you have need of patience, that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. That verse might have made the readers angry. Because they'd been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And now the verse says, you know, your problem is you need patience. (laughs) The word need is the Greek word krea identifies a deficit. You have a deficit of patience. But the word patience here is the word hupomene. From the word hupo, which means to be under, like to be under something really heavy. The word meno means I'm going to stay right here. This is my spot to stay in one spot. But when you put the two words together, hupo and meno, it forms the word hupomene, which pictures a person hupo who really is under something very heavy. Oh, it's so heavy. 
In fact, it's nearly crushing. But his decision is, meno, I'm not moving. When you compound the two words together, it forms the word hupomene. It pictures a person who says, I don't care how heavy it gets. I don't care how long it takes. I'm not going to bend. I'm not going to break. I'm not going to move. This is my spot. I'm not budging. I'm not flinching. I'm not surrendering. Not a centimeter of territory. This is mine, and I am not moving. And a better translation would be endurance. It is the ability to stay put. One man calls this staying power. Another man calls this the ability to hang in there. And my friends, it is divine. And in fact, you find in James chapter 1 that if you will resist and if you will make a decision to stay in faith, God supernaturally releases this power in you from the top of your being to the bottom of your feet. He fills you with endurance, hupomene, the ability to stay put even in the face of difficulties. It's supernatural. But God's waiting for you. He's waiting to see if you're going to make the decision. I'm going to stay put. I'm not going to move. I'm not going to give up. And if you'll make that decision, God will join himself to you. And the verse says, for you have need of this staying power that after you have done the will of God, well, what is the will of God? It's very simple. To do what God told you to do and to receive what God said he was going to give you. That's your assignment. That's the will of God. If you move away from that, you're not doing the will of God. Let me tell you, friends, God's asked me to do some really hard things. And there have been moments when I've heard voices say to me, give up. It's too hard. You've already done more than anybody else. If you give up and walk away, people will still think that you're a hero, that that doesn't matter to me because I know I'm not done. I have to do the will of God. I've got to finish the assignment. And if I will make the decision to finish the assignment, to do the will of God, to totally finish everything that God has told me to do, this verse says, I will receive the promise. That's what the Bible says. And then in verse 37, for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. The word little while, the Greek word mikros. Do you hear another word? Microscopic, a microscope. It describes a microscopic amount of time. The writer of Hebrews basically says, you've waited all this time, all that's left is just a microscopic amount of time compared to what you've already waited. In just a microscopic amount of time, the thing that you've waited for is going to show up and it won't tarry. The word tarry means it's not going to be late. It's going to show up right on time. Verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. Let's talk about that word faith. The word faith in Greek is usually used in a tense that describes a force that is moving forward. I say faith is like a bullet that's been shot out of a gun. That's how you know if you're moving in faith. If you're moving faith, you're moving forward. If you're out of faith, you're either stopped or you're moving backward. But the just shall live by faith. They're being propelled forward. They're constantly moving forward, refusing to give up, taking new territory. But then he says, but if any man draw back, the word draw back means to retreat, to move backward. My soul shall have no pleasure in him. Why? Because he's moved out of faith. If you're in faith, you know it. You're moving forward. You're making progress. You are growing. If you've given up and you're retreating, you have left the life of faith. And this verse says, leaving the life of faith is so bad, you should have no pleasure in anybody who leaves a life of faith. Why? Verse 39, we're not of them that draw back. We're not of them that retreat unto, what's that word? Perdition. The word perdition, the Greek word apoleia, it's a bad word. It describes something that is rotten, stinking, like meat that you left outside. The weather turned hot. Now the meats begin to rot. 
And not only is the meat rotting and stinking, but it's filled with worms. It's filled with magnets. You look at it and ugh, it is so sickening. That's the word used here to describe what happens to people when they leave the life of faith. Let me ask you, have you ever known anyone who once was strong in faith and then they became a skeptic? And they said, nope, not me anymore. I don't, I don't believe those fairy tales. Not only did they leave the life of faith, they became negative. They became cynical spiritually. They became stinking rotten. You don't even like to be around them because they're so negative. They're so cynical. They're so skeptical. It's really ugly, my friends. That's what happens to anyone who draws back. Don't draw back under perdition. When you leave the life of faith, you're no longer moving forward. You've moved into retreat and it will create a filthy, stinking situation in your spiritual life, in your family, in your whole life. But this verse says, instead, we are of them that believe to the saving of the soul. That word believe, again, it's the Greek word faith, pistis. It describes something like a bullet that's been shot out of a gun. We're of them that are moving forward to the saving of the soul. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That verse seems very complex. But when I opened my Greek New Testament and looked at it, it became very simple for me. Why? It says, now faith is the substance. Well, the word substance is the Greek word hypostasis. The word hypo, which in this case means to be by something, to be alongside of something. The word stasis means to stand, to stand. So hypostasis means to stand by something. So you could simply translate the verse, now faith is standing by things hoped for. That verse is not a definition of faith, as many people say. It is the behavior of faith. He's telling us what faith looks like. He's telling us how faith behaves. You could translate it now. Faith is standing by the things hoped for. And Hebrews chapter 11, the entire chapter, is about men and women in the Old Testament who received a word from God. It begins with the story of Enoch. He received a word from God that he would never see death. He had to stand by that word from God. It goes on to the story of Noah. Noah received a word from God. Noah had to pull himself into alignment to stay in faith, and he did, but he had to wait years and years and years and years and years, and thank God he stayed in his place of faith. If he did not, we would not be here today. He stood by his word from God. Or how about Abraham? A man that received a word from God. Oh, Abraham made so many mistakes in his life, many. But one thing he did right, he stood by the promise that God made him. How about his wife? His wife was a cynic. She laughed at God. But one thing she did right, when God finally spoke to her, she stood by her word from God. And all of Hebrews chapter 11, the entire chapter from the beginning to the very end, is about people just like me and just like you. They didn't know they were going to end up in the Bible. They didn't know that. They were just living their life just like you. They didn't know they would end up in Hebrews chapter 11. They had no idea. They were just common people struggling, trying to stay in faith. Most of them not doing everything right, but all of them in Hebrews chapter 11 did one thing right, and that's why they're in Hebrews chapter 11. They never stopped. They never let go. They stood by their word from God. And that is why Hebrews chapter 11, verse 2 says, For by it, by this kind of unbendable, unbreakable faith that never gives up and never lets go and always stands by a word from God, the elders in the Old Testament, everybody in Hebrews chapter 11 received a good report. Now, it may not sound deeply spiritual, but people that are powerful and people that do something are those 
who determine they're not going to give up. They're just not going to give up. How about you? Are you going to give up and walk away? Are you going to say, I've already done enough. I've waited long enough. I'm tired of this. I'm going to move on with my life. Are you going to obey Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, which says, hold fast, wrap your arms around that promise. Hold it down, hold it tight. Refuse to let anybody take it away from you. Hold fast the profession, homologion. You get into alignment. You find anything in you that's in doubt, that's out of alignment. You do everything you can on your part to get into agreement with God. You get into alignment so you become a channel that the promise can flow through. And don't go to bed on your faith. Don't do it. And again, you may say, well, just tell me one more time, one reason why I should not give up. Because the very last statement in Hebrews 10, verse 23 says, for faithful is he that promised. (laughs) Your answer is right around the corner. Just a little while, just a microscopic amount of time, and the thing that you've been waiting for will come, and it won't tarry. It's not going to be late. After all the time you've already waited, what will it hurt for you just to wait a small, microscopic amount of time? Hebrews chapter 10 says the answer's already on its feet. It's walking toward you right now. How sad it would be if the answer shows up and you're not there. Don't let that be you.